In this video, we're going to talk about confidence intervals and exactly how we should interpret them. And here's a reference I used for some of the information for the examples in here. So let's say that we have a patient who is not doing so well and their blood pressure is low. And we want to try giving them a drug to raise that blood pressure. We have two choices. We have vasopressor A to raise the blood pressure and vasopressor B. And we want to determine which one is better, so we do a trial. And in this trial, we, you know, we look at two populations, or we look at two uh, samples, the one we give vasopressor A, one we give vasopressor B, and the mean increase in blood pressure for vasopressor A was 70, and the mean increase of blood pressure for vasopressor, vasopressor B was 95, so the difference is 25. So then we go through our normal uh, hypothesis testing protocol, where we create a null hypothesis that there's no difference an alternative hypothesis that there is a difference and we go through the entire process and then we find out that the p-value is 0.05 so then we say that this is a statistically significant difference that vasopressor B does increase the blood pressure and so then we would report this point estimate in our paper that we had a 25 millimeter per mercury increase in blood pressure using vasopressor B as opposed to vasopressor A compared to vasopressor A uh, with a p-value of 0 0.05 and so it was statistically significant. And that's great, but we can do better in, by, using a point, uh, by using a confidence interval and let me show you how. So with a confidence interval we would report that the value is 25 with a 95% confidence interval that the value is between 5 and 44. And this gives us a lot more information. And what it says is that we are 95% sure that the real value is between 5 and 44. Uh, and so the real value could be 5, which is statistically significant. That is, it did that vasopressor B did increase the blood pressure, but only by 5. So who cares? That is not clinically significant. And it also could have increased the blood pressure by 44, which is uh, a lot. You're like, wow, that's an, uh, that, that thing works great. So you can see already that confidence intervals give you an estimate on whether this uh, effect is clinically significant, whereas the point estimate only told you whether it was statistically significant. And so it does so. It gives you much more information than just the p-value does. It also gives you some. Uh, information on the precision of your estimate. So whereas we might re report 25 and 0.05 as our point estimate uh, for a confidence 95 percent confidence interval this could be 5 to 44 or it could be between 20 and 32 which is much more precise or it could be between uh, z you know 0 and 100 which is less precise. So the confidence intervals also gives us information on precision. It gives you so much more information than just this point estimate with uh, the p-value. Let's look at a few other things first before we go. And the next one is let's look at uh, the different kinds of confidence intervals you can get. And so the more confident you want to be about something, uh, the bigger the interval you're going to have. right? So the more confident I want to know about the difference, in order to be more confident that my interval is going to contain it, I have to have a bigger interval, right? So if I'm willing to be less confident, I can have a smaller interval. And another point that you could see here is that for this 99% confidence interval, the point of no difference, that is a value of zero, is included in here. So you cannot say with 99% confidence that there is a difference between vasopressor A and vasopressor B because the value could certainly be zero. And it could actually be worse, right? It could be negative uh, 5. It could actually, uh, vasopressor A could actually do better than vasopressor B. So let's talk about this point of no difference a little bit more. And when you're comparing things, you're going to look at uh, two different methods, subtraction and division. So when you subtract two things that are the same, you get the same minus the same, you get 0. That's when there's no difference. When you divide two things that are the same, the same thing divided by the same thing, you get 1. So subtractions are things like we compared in our example here with the blood pressure. But could it be other things like uh, risk reduction, 
So anything that includes the word difference or reduction in it. Now for division, we're looking for things like odds ratio or risk ratios. So you're looking for things that include the word ratio in it. So if a parameter is listed and it's a subtraction type thing, like maybe they say the difference is 25 with a 99% confidence interval of five, negative 5 to 78, you look at the confidence interval and you say, hey, that includes the point of no difference. And so that is not statistically significant. Similarly, if you're looking at a ratio type uh, comparison, then you would look at the, uh, and, and let's say they had an odds ratio of 4 with a 99% confidence interval uh, of 0 0.2 to 7, you would say, hey, the point of no difference is in there. So this thing is not statistically significant. So again, let me stress that point. Uh, when you're looking at confidence intervals, think about what is the point of no difference. If it's a subtraction type problem, the point of no difference is zero. If it's a division type problem, the point of no difference is one. And we know we can recognize a division type problem because it'll usually have the word ratio in it. And we'll recognize the subtraction type problem because it'll usually have the words like reduction or difference in it. And if the confidence interval includes this point of no difference, zero for subtraction type problems and one for division type problems, then you don't have statistical significance. And so you can see that confidence intervals tells us so much more than point estimates with a p-value does. Uh, and so you're going to see these reported more and more often in journals instead of p-values and hypothesis testing because the confidence intervals can give you an estimate of the precision. It can also tell you whether something is uh, potentially clinically significant versus only being statistically significant. It tells you other things as well, but uh, just remember the the thing that you want to look at here in order to determine whether something is, is statistically significant or not is, does the confidence interval include the point of no difference? And we looked at that. Subtraction is zero, division is one. Uh, that is the point of no difference. If it includes that point, then it is not stati statistically significant. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.